let me take this time to welcome you to this devotional message. I'm going to be reading from the passage that is found in Luke chapter 15, verse 10. This passage is taken from the three parables that were narrated by Jesus Christ. But let me read this passage that comes from one of the parables. Uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 20. And he, rose, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. May, God, may the Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. The, this parable is part of the three parables that Jesus Christ related. And when he related, when he narrated those parables, he was actually answering a question. Questions had, had been raised by the text, uh, by, the, by the Pharisees and the, the scribes. They noticed that Jesus was keeping a company of text collectors, of sinners, and they were attracted to him. And they started uh, talking among themselves and they said, how can this man, being holy, being righteous, how can he keep this kind of company? And, uh, and, and, and then Jesus Christ, as a way of responding to, to them, he, he told, he narrated three parables. But I'm not going to look at the other three, the other two parables but let me simply mention he related the parable of the lost coin. He related the parable of the lost sheep. Now, I'm, I've read this passage from the book of Luke. But of interest, Matthew also related this parable. Then the third parable is the parable of the lost son. This is how it is uh, described in many uh, versions of the, of the scriptures the parable of the lost son. We're going to focus on the, the lost son. And remember, he was simply telling this parable to answer a question. Now, just to give you a background of, with, of this parable, this is a parable of a man who had two sons, and uh, uh, the younger son and the elder son. And this man, according to the parable, it appears that he was a wealthy man because he could afford to give uh, inheritance to his children. Uh, according to this parable, his younger son approached the father and he said to the father, Father, why don't you give me a portion of my inheritance? And the father said, no problem. The, the father did not even ask questions. He gave him the portion and according to the scriptures, Few days after that, the son left home together with his wealth, together with his, four, uh, with his animals. And he, according to the passage, he went into a faraway country. And according to the story, there was famine, there was hunger, there was drought in the faraway country. He lost everything. And he had to look for employment and he found an employment and he had to take care of the pigs. And he was also eating together with the pigs. And while he was there, according to the passage, he came back to his senses and he said, I will get up, I will go back to my father. But this is what I'm going to say to my father. Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like some of your servants. And he rehearsed this story and he started off back to his father. And when he got home, the passage that we have read, the text that, that we have read, and, and he rose and he went back, to, he went back and his father saw him and he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now we will come back to that, that passage. But as the story unfolds, and the father started, uh, um, he invited other servants, he said to them, get clothing, get a ring, get shoes, uh, clean up my son, let's have a party, bring that fetid calf that we have been uh, making it fat while we are waiting for the son, let's have a party, my son was dead and my son is now alive. Now the story takes a turn, there's a, an older son 
who coming back from the fields to work for the father, he hears that there is a symphony, there is music, and he inquires from the servants, what's going on? What is it that, what, 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 what's the joy, what's the celebration about? And the servant said, hey, your brother is back home, he's safe, and your father is celebrating the return of your brother. And according to the story, according to the parable, he became so upset with the father. And while the father was in the party, in the house, the father heard that your son, your elder son, is upset with you. And the father left the party and he went to his son and he said, son, what's going on? I hear that you are angry. And the son said, yes, I'm angry. I've just heard that, that you are celebrating the return of this son of yours who squandered your wealth together with halots. How can you celebrate misery? How can you celebrate such a loss? And the father said, I have a reason to celebrate. My son was dead, now he's alive. I have a reason to celebrate. He's back home. Come, let's celebrate together. And uh, that's where the story ends. We don't get to hear whether the elder son came back or joined the party. That's where the parable ends. And it appears that Christ wanted us to fill in the gaps, to decide how this parable should end. So it, the, 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 the ending of this, the end, is the father is outside the party, the younger son is in the party, the elder son is outside, he's angry with the father, he doesn't understand why they're celebrating, particularly the person who has squandered the wealth of the family, spend it with halots. I don't even know how he found out that he spent it with halots, but he had this information. Um, and the father was pleading with him. Okay, that's, that's the end of the, the parable. But now let's try to extract some lessons from this parable. Remember, Christ was answering a question that was raised in, by the scribes and the Pharisees. Why is it that this man, being a good man, why does he keep company, a company of sinners, tax collectors, all sinful people? And, and he told this parable. Now there's something, there are interesting features around this parable, around this parable, something, things that I want to share with you. Now, if you notice is this in this parable, we don't hear anything about the mother, the mother of the two, the two gentlemen, the, the older one and the younger one. We don't hear anything about that. And, uh, and, 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 and we get the impression that this father had problems with his children. One left home, one remained home, but disrespected him. So the other one took his inheritance, the other one remained home. The father has problems. And maybe we can even conclude, we can even conclude and say, this, these children were badly brought up. And, and we can even add and say, whenever you see misbehaving children, it is because their parents did not raise them well. We can make, we can make that conclusion. But it's not always true that the behavior, the choices, the way children behave, the way they do things does not necessarily mean they learn that from the parents. If we were to take that attitude that wayward children are as a result of uh, parents who did not do a good job in teaching their children, then what do we do with the story of Genesis where God had two children in the Garden of Eden? He had given them the laws. He had given them an advantage. He had informed them about the enemy. He had informed them about rebellion. He had place them in a good environment and they chose to disobey God. What do we do? Was God a bad parent or he simply had children who made wrong choices? If, you, if we say the choices of the children is a reflection of bad bringing up, then what are we saying about God? But the story is, the behavior of the father shows that these boys did not learn from him. The behavior of God in the Garden of Eden shows that he did not bring up wayward children. They chose to be wayward. Let's follow the story. It appears that the home is in trouble. 
One is naughty, the other one is at home. Uh, and the, the other one had wasted the, the wealth of the family. Now notice something. When the younger son approached the father, father, I see that you are, I, I understand. Normally we get inheritance when a person dies. You know, there's a will. I know those dynamics. But father, let's overlook that, man. Let's, let, I don't want to get this when you are dead. And more so, I see that you are not actually dying. There's no sign that you will die this year, next year. You are, you are, you are able to do everything. You are strong. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Or maybe I should hoist something here. Possibly the father was a vegan. Why did he live this long to the annoyance of the son? And the son said, no, man, no, man, let's leave this thing. Give me what is mine. And the father said, no problem. Here's your share. And he left. And he left. Now, the, 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 according to, the, to this parable, he went to a faraway country. Now, I want to believe that the father might have known something about the father faraway countries. But I'm curious to understand why the father did not sit down his son and say, son, why do you think home is not a greener pasture? Why do you think far, a faraway country is a greener pasture? Why do you think you'll make it at home at, 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 at a, in a faraway country? The father did not do that. The father did not even ask, have you ever been to a faraway country? Do you know the challenges and the joys of the faraway country? Do you know anything about the far? He, didn't, he did not give him a lecture. Now, if my son had come to me and said, give me part of my, I want to go to a faraway country, I would say, I would sit him down and give him a lecture and say, I'm not giving, actually, you are disrespecting me. You are saying, I need the inheritance while you are still alive. Actually, the will at, or a testament provides that a person, it, it, a, a inheritance is shared when the person who has drawn a will dies. Not before, but the father did not even raise that issue. Now, it was actually a disrespect on the side of the younger boy, the child, to go to the father and demand that. And the father could have done what is actually, what was actually accepted back then, that if your son, if you book, if you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, from verse 18 up to 21, there is a passage that says, if a father and a mother have a child who's wayward, a child who's rebellious, a child, whenever they want him to stop, whenever they try to discipline him, he doesn't listen. Whenever you have that kind of child, it says the parents of this child should get hold of him, drag him to the, to the entrance of the gate, and invite all the elders of the community together with the young men and tell them that this son of ours is wayward. This son of ours does not listen. And I give you permission to stone him. And according to this passage, the community would stone the rebellious, the stubborn boy. And now the passage says, once he's stoned to death, evil would have been put away. And Israel shall hear about this, and the other children will fear to misbehave. The father could have done that. But the father did not even do that. He did not even give him a, give him a lecture. He did not even send a search party to say, uh, okay, son, I see that you are going to a place that you don't even know. Let me hire people that will go with you and make sure that you are comfortable. The father did not even do that. Did not even convince him. Did not even say anything to him. He said, you want to go, go. I, I, I get the impression that there are times when a lecture will not change the decision that people have made. I get the impression that sometimes information will not help. Possibly the father, it's just like when, when I don't know if you've seen when young people are in an, uh, a loving relationship, uh, particularly infatuation. You can't speak sons to them. Doesn't matter what you say to them. They love one another. They're excited about one another. To warn them at that point will not amount to it. Actually, when you warn them, you're actually driving them together. 
They, they actually, you, you help them to bond when you try to break them. So he left. And uh, according to our passage, he came back. And when he came back, now, before coming back home, he started rehearsing that speech. He, he said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. And when I get home, I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. Notice, he, he now senses that he did not only sin against the father, he also sinned against heaven. He notices that, that he did not only disrespect his father, he also broke the law of God by disrespecting his father. And he recited that, that Father, uh, I'm no longer worthy to be treated like your son. Please treat me like any other servant. And, and he kept on saying that. Now, I want you to notice something when he, when, when, while he was reciting that, walking towards him, his father saw him. His father saw him, and when he saw him, he ran towards him. He had compassion on him, and he fell on his neck, and he kissed him. And he kissed him. Now, if you read uh, commentaries, they will tell you that it was not when the father ran, he actually broke the ancient biblical times, protocols. You don't run as an elderly person to a child. He actually broke those protocols. But some are saying possibly because if he had not run to, to meet his son, the neighbors would have stoned his son based on this passage that I've read on, in Deuteronomy. Because they knew what has, had transpired, that he took the wealth of the father and he squandered that wealth. But the father was the first one to reach the son before the stones reached the son. So he grabbed the son, he hanged on his neck, and he kissed, and he kissed him. Now, the word that has been used there for kissing, it's not a common word. It's not a common word. Uh, it's the word katafileo. Uh, and, and it's the same word that was used uh, in the context of Mary Magdalene. You remember Mary Magdalene when he went to, he heard that Sim, uh, Jesus Christ was visiting Simeon and, uh, and, and at Simon's place. And, 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 and Mary Magdalene showed up and she started weeping at the feet of Jesus Christ, washing his feet with her tears, wiping them with his hair. And, he, and she kept on kissing the feet, the feet of Jesus Christ. Now the passage says, the, the passage says, when Christ was now addressing someone, Christ said, you gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, this is now Luke 7 verse 45, you gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss me, to kiss my feet. Now notice, she has not See, she has not stopped kissing me. The same word, katafileo, also used in, in, in Luke chapter 15, verse 20. In other words, the father did not just kiss the son once. He continued without ceasing to kiss the son. Now, visualize this. The father, the, the son wants to re has, wants to, to make a presentation. Father, I have sinned against you and I have sinned against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And he could not proceed with that because the father interrupted the son with a continuous kiss. He did not come, to, he did not mention the part where he was saying, Father, make me like one of your servants. He did not get to that because the father interrupted him with a continuous kiss. When, whenever he was not kissing him, he was giving the instruction to his servant. You, go and prepare a fetid cow. And after that, he would come back and kiss the son. And the son would not get a chance to say something. And when the father stopped kissing, he would say, you, go and get a rope. You, go and get a ring. Go and get shoes. And he would come back to the son and continued kissing the son. I want to believe that this story is about the father who kisses continuously 
the wayward son. The very same mouth, according to the elder brother, the mouth that was kissing the harlots, the father is kissing that mouth. And after that, you, you know, I think we have related the story. The father is sitting in the party. He's still kissing his son. He's not, he's not stopping. He's still giving. I, I want to believe when the father was kissing him, the father was saying, I'm not interested in your story. I'm interested in the fact that you're home. The father continued to kiss him. And when he was kissing him, he was simply saying, son, I have forgiven you. Son, I don't count the losses that you have incurred for this family. Son, I, for, I love you. He continued to kiss him. And he's sitting, he's in the party, and while he's still on the neck of the child, he's still kissing the son, he's still kissing, kissing the son. Up until the, the other seven says, eh, 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 Master, stop a little bit, stop. There's a problem outside. What's going on outside? I'm busy with my son. My son was dead, now he's alive. What, what can be more important to me that, than this? And he said, there, your, your elder son, your elder son is upset. Now the father stops what he's doing. He does exactly what he did. He leaves for the, with his son. He left home to go and meet him. With this one, he left the party to go and talk to the brother, to the younger brother, to the elder brother. And when he got to him, he said, yeah, bro, yeah, wh wh why, why are you upset? He said, father, is there a reason for this family to celebrate? Particularly that this guy, your son, this, your son, wasted the family wealth with halots. Is there, do you want to celebrate that? And the father said, I'm not celebrating that. I'm celebrating the fact that your brother was dead. Now he's alive. Now notice this. Now notice the, the, the elder brother refers to his kid brother as this, your son, and the father comes back, he says, this, your brother. Now, when the elder brother addressed him as this, your son, he was simply saying, he's not my brother, he's your son. And the father was saying, this, your brother, he's still your brother because I'm still your father. He's still your brother. Now, let's bring this to the, to the end. Here's, a, here's an irony of the whole story. The one who was outside is now inside. This is the little brother. The one who was inside, this is the elder brother. He's now outside. Here's the wonder of it all. Both of them, the father stands up to go and meet them. Here's the father who goes out of his way to meet his son. He met the other one who was returning. He went out of the party, out of celebration, to meet the elder brother. Here's the father who goes out of his way to reach out. Here's the father who celebrates. Here's the father who gives a kiss of grace. May God bless us all.